It's Confederation. We have a country. Negotiations between Canada and Hudson's Bay Company were strictly between HBC and Canada, and no one even bothered to consult with the people already living there. When surveyors led by Willie McDougall crossed the U.S. border to begin surveying Rupert's land for the government of Canada, they started by surveying Métis' traditional hunting grounds. The Métis decided that enough was enough and rallied behind their leader, Louis Riel, a Montreal-educated bilingual 25-year-old man. Riel had the surveyors escorted back to the U.S. border, and the following day, the Métis took Fort Garry. Riel formed a provisional government, which had a list of rights which were to be met upon joining Canada, along with their preservation of the Métis way of life in mind. Eventually, it was agreed that the Métis list of rights would be used as a basis for negotiation with the Canadian government, and a Métis delegation was sent to Ottawa. Unknown to the government, a group known as the Canadian Party had formed, and led by John Schultz, they counterattacked the Métis at Fort Garry, looking to claim the good farmland for Canadian West. A number of attackers were arrested by Riel, one of them being a mouthy young Protestant named Thomas Scott. An Orangeman who had moved to the Red River from Ontario, Scott made his anti-French and anti-Catholic views insultingly clear to his captors. Scott constantly taunted Riel, which led to the turning point of the resistance. The government tried Scott and two others, and found them guilty of treason, and sentenced them to death. Riel pardoned two of the men, Major Bolton and William Gaddy, but allowed Scott's sentence to stand. On March 4th, Scott was executed by firing squad. On May 12th, the Canadian Parliament passed the Manitoba Act, and on July 15th, 1870, they officially created Canada's fifth province, Manitoba. The Manitoba Act stated that the Métis would have all their land protected, but the rest would be owned by Dominion of Canada. The Métis could not get legal title to their lands until the Dominion Survey or section the land. After this, the Métis were issued with a skip, a piece of paper entitling them to 64 hectares of land. The Métis had no experience with written law or money in general, and were easily cheated out of land that should have been theirs. In the August of 1870, Louis Riel caught word of the Canadian militia that was coming to arrest him, and fled, seeking refuge in St. Joseph's Mission in the United States. Louis Riel would return, however, and play his part in the Northwest Resistance, eventually surrendering to Canadian officials in the aftermath of the Battle of Patoche. On July 6, 1885, in Regina, Riel was charged with high treason for his role during the Resistance, and he was sentenced to death. After having his execution postponed not once, but twice, Riel was hanged on November 16, 1885, to the disdain of the Métis, French, and Catholic, and to the happiness of the Orangemen. This leaves us with a quick summary. In summary, Confederation was an indirect cause, as it indirectly caused res resistance as Canada forming eventually led to the thought of expansion, not directly because of Confederation. Not including the Métis in the Rupert's Land talks was a direct cause, as it influenced the resistance because the disrespect shown by not including the Métis may have pushed them over. The reason for the interest of Rupert's Land came from Canadians trying to stop the Americans from taking a large amount of land to connect Alaska. This in turn indirectly caused the resistance, as wanting to obtain Rupert's Lands did not cause resistance, but made surveyors have to survey the land. The surveying of Métis land was a direct cause, as it directly caused the resistance, as the Métis believed they were losing what was rightfully theirs without a say. After the resistance, a few main consequences occurred. A direct consequence of the Red River resistance was the province of Manitoba being formed. Due to the green light of the Métis Act, the 5th province of Canada was formed directly because of the resistance. A direct consequence of the Red River resistance was Thomas Scott being executed. He was executed due to his anti-Catholic and, and death threats, which was directly derived from the resistance. Another direct consequence of the Red River resistance was Louis Riel going into exile and eventually being executed. Due to his inclusion of the execution of Thomas Scott, he went into exile and was executed directly relating to the resistance. Last but not least, our indirect consequence was Louis Riel Day. Louis Riel Day was indirectly made from the resistance, as this consequence happened a long time after while having little to do with the resistance. That is all. Thank you for watching.